What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to bring you a quick little guide on what to do right after you finish the campaign, you're just hitting 60, and you're really trying to figure out what is the next steps in your Diablo journey, working your way up to Torment 4. Okay, so I'm gonna break this down. I have a whole list of notes right here in front of me. So let's go ahead and get right into this. I will not waste any of more of your time. So here we go. So the first thing is once you finish level 60, okay, you're gonna be able to go and do the Deeds of Champion quest line, okay? This quest line is, it's kind of like tedious in a way, um, but it's very good for brand new players because once you finish the campaign, it's gonna open up the campaign quest line of Deeds of Champion. Now, all Deeds of Champion is, is to take you through the different end game progressions and stuff that you can do. And it kind of takes you right in order, which I think is really, really unique and kind of cool that kind of puts you on a semi-directional path of, hey, here's things that you can do in the end game. And here's things that, you know, if you haven't experienced them yet, like here it is, this is the brand new content and this is stuff that you can do. So the Deeds of Champion quest line, involves a few different things. There's gonna be some side quests here that you're gonna be able to do, but what it opens up is, it opens up your Spirit Brazier, so you're gonna be able to access the Undercity. It's gonna open up doing uh, your end game stuff as far as like experiencing the Helltide and going through an opening chest there, which I think is cool. Second, it's gonna guide you on how to get all four of your mercenaries, as you can see here. I have two of them, and one of them is actually ranked up. I just finished Rhaenyra. What is this? Verana? I think I said that right. Verana. She is 100% complete. And now uh, my mercenary right here is almost done. He's almost done, which is fantastic. Um, so it opens up the quest line to be able to unlock all of your champions and guide you through that path, which I think is really cool. Next, it's also going to talk to you about the Undercity, which uh, the Undercity is actually, that's the den. The Undercity should be right here. The Dark Citadel, excuse me, Dark Citadel, the brand new raid, which is Rise of the Khazir. Uh, the Dark Citadel resets every three and a half days, every four days, you'll get a new cache. I will have an updated video side note of the Dark Citadel, which I'm gonna present a more in-depth guide for people who want to really experience this and have some fun. The previous guide that I have does work, but now I can share a lot more with you. So it, it's the Deeds of Champion is the very first thing that you're going to want to do, okay? Next, after that is compete, completing the pit tier level 20, okay? You're going to come over here to, to Kerriger, and you want to complete pit level 20, okay? Pit level 20 is what's going to unlock Torment 1, okay? Going into the next four phases of your Diablo 4 journey through the game. So you want to come in here. You want to open up level 20. Now, when you first get to this portion of the quest and deeds of champion, it's going to take you through this. It is going to give you three of your artifice or stones. All right. It gives you three only. So be careful when you're opening this. And if you fail, you will have to go complete nightmare dungeons in order to get more artifice or stones. Or you could open up a tree of whispers, which would give you artifice or stones. So that way you can come back and retry. But the next step after completing deeds of champion is to come unlock tier 20 do this in the pit it unlocks torment one where you can start getting your full upgrades because once you get into torment one you're going to unlock everything for people who don't really realize once you get to torment one torment one gives you access to every item in the game you get the legendary unique and mythics it gives you you know obviously ancestrals become available and more gold and exp and you can also do the new activities that become uh, available in diablo and then every tier after that is just basically giving you more gold and exp so getting to torment one is crucial for the next phases of your character next okay we got to go do the pit you are going to farm the pit after this the reason for this is because of our glyphs okay you want to come in here into your paragon and you want to get your glyphs all completely leveled up you want to do this now i will say that you know, going through the pit, it will be difficult to get to level 50 um, to upgrade your glyphs. But you do want to level these up considerably. I would suggest, like, getting into the 30s of your glyphs. And not only that, unlocking and actually getting all of them in totality. Like, getting all your glyphs and leveling up 
a bunch of them to as close to 45 as you can is huge because I'm assuming by this point, you probably have a lot of your gear choices that you really need for your build. Um, going into here, and as you can see on my gear pieces, guys, like, yeah, like this is a unique helm, but like my chest piece, my boots, my rings, and my amulet, they're not even ancestral yet. And I'm absolutely dominating like Torment 2. I can go in and do Torment 3. However, my resistances and stuff, you know, they start to really lack as soon as I go into Torment 3. But right now in Torment 2, I can absolutely dominate and all my stuff isn't even ancestral yet. So after farming in the pit and getting your uh, glyphs and leveling up as high as you possibly can in Torment 1, next to me would be going to do Nightmare Dungeons and going to do uh, Infernal Hordes. So you got your Infernal Hordes here. You're going to want to go do these for resources, particularly the boss mats, um, excuse me, all of your mats, your materials here, and more importantly, Artificer Stones and Obducite to use to masterwork your gear. So Infernal Horde's still very, very good with all the changes. I would definitely do that. You're going to combine this with your Nightmare Dungeons. Nightmare Dungeons flat out have gotten 100% better. I would definitely go do these to get a bunch of Obducite to level up your or excuse me, masterwork your gear. You can see here that I still haven't masterworked my gear because a lot of this stuff isn't ancestral yet. So once I get a lot of them ancestral, like this one I could probably do my pants, my gloves, and that's it. Everything else I need to get ancestral. So going through and doing Nightmare Dendrils to rack up a bunch of the objects I hear is a very, very solid choice. Go do those guys so you can masterwork your gear to be even more powerful. Next is probably the two new mechanics of the game you're going to want to go over here back down to uh the Karas bazir and go do your um under city under city is going to be great it's going to be the main way excuse me let me go into my inventory the main way that you find all of your um runes okay i know the runes are a little underwhelming with all the changes especially to the main two that we're still using but the rune system is here i hope that it gets improved on down the road but the Undercity is by far the best way to find all of your runes. Now, I will say that if you do have a lot of boss materials and you're able to go find or uh, farm bosses, bosses drop one, so it is completely random, but I have gotten legendary runes from bosses, and I have got plenty of rare runes from bosses. So if you have a bunch of boss mats, you can definitely go farm there. Um, but the Undercity is by far the best place. Getting these runes will give you a little bit of extra power. Um, next and finally will be the under city, the dark citadel again, guys, the dark citadel is the brand new, um, content here and it is by far the best. I have had an absolute blast doing this with my community and some of my people and players that I play with all the time that you guys have seen live on this channel. Um, but dark citadel is super fun. Now I know you get the cash every four days, but that's okay. You can still go through and do this to get those sweet, juicy, cosmetics and just enjoy the content itself because it's still really good xp it's still you can still get some really good items out of here and it's something different if you want to mix it up if you uh haven't um now for all you solo players this is this part isn't going to apply to you but by all means give it a shot if you can go into the party finder again guys i think a lot of people forget about the party finder actually being here in here in the social like come in here to the party finder come to the dark citadel search this is, you know, there's already a bunch here of people who are wanting to do it first time, first time relaxed, you know, so that kind of just means it's their first time. You kind of teach them how to go through it, et cetera, get in a discord call and do all those really good things. Um, but yeah, guys, that would be the next steps. The final step overall is just straight up farming the pit. Okay. You're going to be farming the pit for a few reasons. One, it's going to be to continue leveling up your glyphs. Okay. Two, and most important is your Paragon levels. I'm only Paragon level 139 out of 300, okay? But you could definitely go through here and just farm, 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 farm. Now, during this process, while you're farming, make sure you're always using a Opal. It doesn't matter which one that you're using, although the boss one to drop boss summoning uh, mats as well as Infernal Compasses, very strong. I definitely suggest getting this one. Um, and then one of your other... Um, elixirs that's going to give you 8% XP. So instead of your elixir of precision that only gives five, you want to do the one that's, you know, elixir of precision two. So it gives you that 8% instead of five. So that way you guys are at 23% increased EXP before any party members 
um, come into the to the mix to increase that number even more. And then, of course, don't forget, you can come over here to the Alchemist and go craft um, some incense here. Make sure you guys are doing these. These are very, very important. Like grab a chorus of war um, or like something else like soothing spices is very strong and or song of the mountain just to get another 5% that puts you at 28% um, EXP. Now do keep in mind that you can't stack two of these. That kind of is a bummer. You don't get the bonus XP, but you can get multiple effects from just stacking two of them. So farming the pit will be the last and final thing that you do um, to go ahead and level up your character and get into those higher torment levels. So I wanted to make this quick guide for everybody. So if you guys have enjoyed it, thank you so much for watching. Like the video. Let's get this over 50 likes. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe, and also let me know if there's like other tips or other things that you guys would suggest for newer players or people who are just hitting 60, getting into their end game that they can do. Let me know down in the comments, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.